Are you ready for some Jersey? Well, we've got Jersey. The zipper was made here. The light bulb was made here. The color television calls the Garden State home. Everybody wants to know about New Jersey. Sandy beaches, beautiful cities. We even have the Jersey Turnpike. Inventors, music, the movies. You need an exit? We got them too. You want Jersey? This is Jersey. We're at the Jersey Shore today. And we are hungry. We're at Tim McClune's Rum Runner. We're not only gonna check out the restaurant, we're also gonna check out the kitchen and the bar. The Rum Runner's been rebuilt. And it's taller and better than ever. An absolute staple in the tiny town of Seabright, the Rum Runner has been the flagship of McClune's restaurants for 30 years. Built on the barrier island between the Navasink River and the ocean, the newly raised restaurant is a bounty of breathtaking views. Head inside for a spacious interior, modern decor, indoor and outdoor seating, and mouth-watering food. This home away from home has truly captured the heart of the Jersey Shore with all it has to offer. Owner and local celebrity Tim McClune knows a thing or two about restaurants, and the new Rum Runner delivers one of the finest examples of the quintessential Jersey experience. We knew that people liked the Rummer because it was, I guess in a word, cozy and it was friendly and welcoming, and we wanted to make sure that in doing a brand new modern building that we didn't lose that. The decor is just beautiful here. Did you design any of this? Well, I would have to say no. I did have a design consultant and our architects and my wife, Beth, and we kind of did this thing together. I mean, we had five feet of water during Sandy, so we had to start from scratch, and we figured we'd go up seven or eight feet, something like that. We ended up going up 14 feet. It took three and a half years, but here we are. To get into this newly raised restaurant, guests enter a stone-walled foyer and climb this beautiful grand wooden staircase up to the dining room. Or simply take a ride, of course. When they get to the top, they're immediately greeted by that unbelievable view. I mean, the star of the show is the water view, and if everything felt really kind of earthy and real to people rather than some sort of plastic environment that they would really enjoy it here. Because we're counting on the fact that people will come here year round, that we're not a summer tourist destination. So I had to make sure that we have this fireplace here that works on both sides, that it was warm and inviting in a year-round environment. As far as our south deck, our deck at the Rum Runner was what made that place go, the outside dining. And we knew we couldn't replicate that. But what we wanted to do is have a year-round location. All the doors fold back so you can get that inside-outside kind of thing. There's a lot of openness here, too. Because they're trying to give every linear inch of water view that we could, and people love it. It used to be you'd walk into a bar, you were facing a wall, but now the freestanding middle-of-the-room kind of bars are really what people like. I think it creates at least the illusion of having interaction with other people instead of just sort of sitting there. So inside the building, we wanted to have a really big welcoming bar, and a lot of people have dinner at the bar. It's why you'll no longer see on bar tops all kinds of rails and things. People took that away because it was too hard to eat their food. And here's the truth of it. We can have a really beautiful building with a wonderful water view and somebody playing the piano right behind me here. And if the food isn't good, all is lost. It doesn't matter if you do all those things. If the food doesn't work, forget it. Now, how is this restaurant different than the others that you have? Well, one of the things we've done, we design a menu that we think matches the location. So everywhere they go, they will find some things in common, like we serve our lobster bisque everywhere. But for the most part, you'll see individual dishes that are just at that place. And I think that's what makes us have followers because they'll have a different experience in each one. Mike Dolan was our chef in Robinson's in Red Bank. And we felt real good about what happened at Robinson's, so we asked him if he would come here. Is it true you're not allowed in the kitchen? Oh, well, they tolerate me if I walk through the kitchen, but I get the look. I'm a piano player, Gary. <laughs> in an effort to keep Tim out of the kitchen, we sent Jen in to speak to Chef Dominic, who was showing us one of Rum Runner's signature crab entrees. All right, so Dominic, what are you going to make for us? I'm going to be making our crab cake entree. Awesome, all right, let's get started. Well, we start with a hot pan, a little bit of oil, two crab cakes. And do you guys make the crab cakes here? Yes, we make the crab cakes daily with fresh crab meat from Maryland. Nice. So we just sear off the crab cakes. And while we're doing that, uh -huh. we get another pan, green beans, sauteed with shallot, garlic, thyme, and a little bit of butter. We get our produce from Rooney, which is a local produce company here in Seabright. Okay. All that's going on. Flip the crab cakes. And you finished up in the salamander. It's essentially a broiler. So how long have you been cooking for? Just about 10 years. Okay, cool. So, and have you always been in the area? I'm from Sayreville. Being down the shore is a very recent thing for me. The opportunity came for me to move here. Luckily, got the job. 
All right, so the green beans are ready. Just a few more minutes for the crab cake. All right, awesome. So we got some mashed potatoes on there. One scoop of mashed potato, our green beans, crab cakes, and it gets finished with our roasted red pepper aioli. Ooh, nice. So this is our crab cake entree. It's two crab cakes made with jumbo lump crab meat from Maryland, sauteed green beans, and mashed potatoes. And I can't wait to chow this down. Oh, wow, that's really good. I mean, I'll, I'll eat as much as you need me to. Amazing. Well, the crab is amazing, the potatoes are great, the green beans on point, excellent. Of course, Jen's dinner wouldn't be complete without a drink to go along with it. All right, I'm here with Dan. Hey, Dan. How are you, Genevieve? I'm doing great. He's gonna be making me a rum runner, right? Absolutely, the rum runner's our traditional drink here. It's wonderful, it's like basically a rum punch. Okay. With a lot of rum in it, and Tim loves it. It's his favorite drink, so you, you ready? I'm, I'm, I think so. Let's see what I could do. All right. All right, so this is our traditional jar, and then we're gonna pour our light rum, our dark rum, banana liqueur, which is Tim's favorite, blackberry brandy, and our juices, pineapple and OJ. We're gonna shake it nice and cold. That's the most important part about this drink. Lastly, we're gonna add a little bit of grenadine. Let me know what you think. All right. Wow, this is really good. It tastes like candy in a drink, frankly, which is amazing. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> While Jen sips on that cold glass of paradise, Tim takes us upstairs to the second floor dining and party room where, you guessed it, the view is even better. How many people does this room hold? Somewhere between 70 and 80. We made this really into a mezzanine, but it's kind of cool, I think, and that uh, makes for an openness of the whole building. I'd have to say, I'm not sure there are any better views in America than the one we have right here. We're up 30 feet, and we also have a great view of the ocean from up here, which was something we didn't consider at all in our planning. It wasn't like, boy, if we go up high, we can see the ocean here. It was more like we built it, we got up here, and we said, wow, you can see the ocean. What a pleasant surprise. It's primarily intended as a private party kind of room. But once we've been open for X number of months, we'll serve a la carte dining up here as well. You know, on a Friday or Saturday night, we can, we can certainly do that. Live music has been part of what we do forever. I have a lot of musician friends, and I love it when we can hire them and have them play here. It's part of the joyful experience, I think, that restaurants do. We try to do things that you can't do at home. We're going to give you a better meal most times than you can get. And the way we decorate it, if there are candles on the table and lights in the trees, and if there's a live musician entertaining you, there's not a lot of that going on in your house. You're going to be hard pressed to find someone who's not very pleasant helping you from the moment you walk in the door. And I think that's a big, big part of this. So how can people find more about your restaurant? Well, the simplest way now in the world we live in is just by going to mcloons.com and they have to realize I don't have a second C in my name. I wish my father had just put that second C in there, but it's mcloones.com. The main thing we were trying to accomplish here was to not have a demographic in the building. That's always been our goal from the beginning, that you couldn't say who it is that goes there. That the demographic is just people who want to go out for a nice time, feel that they're in a really pleasant environment. And let's just see if we can have a large number of people find a home here, which is what you really want to have happen. That food was phenomenal, and that drink was on point. You know, with Tim, you always expect the best. And the view is fantastic. Everyone's got to come to Tim McLuhan's Rum Runner here in Seabright. We'll see you there. We're up in Ridgefield Park today, one of the last exits on the turnpike, to check out the jewel of this village, MK Valencia. This newly transformed space offers an upscale contemporary experience one might expect from New York City, right in the heart of Bergen County. Incorporating a lounge area, main dining room, two bars, a spacious patio, and a secluded wine cellar, MK Valencia is truly a modern oasis disguised as a corner bar. The menu offers a great diversity with a fusion of Asian, Italian, Spanish, and Middle Eastern cuisines, as well as a raw bar. Whether you're looking for a tasty dinner, an intimate date, or a private event, this trendy hotspot really attracts a crowd and boasts one of the best dining experiences in northern New Jersey. Wow, Monica, a restaurant like this in Ridgefield Park, how'd you get started here? 
Oh, we were open four years ago, and it's just been a wonderful place for people to come and have a great time. Why'd you pick Ridgefield Park? It's a little town that we thought needed a, a nice place, a place where the community can just come together, whether it's dinner or booking a party. It's been a great spot for people to come and just have a great time. And we've been open for four years now. We decided to go with the contemporary look for the restaurant. Um, we use, for example, for the walls, we use porcelanosa tiles from Spain. And the lighting, we use aqua creations from Italy. And you'll see throughout the restaurants, mesh curtains that actually adds privacy to the guests, especially when we have a smaller private party. We get different age groups here. We get business people, couples, families that want to just have a good time. Now, how many people can you seat here? In the dining room, we can actually accommodate 100 guests. We also have a patio that can seat 25 people. During the summertime, people have a great time there. They can eat, they can have drinks. Uh, we put a TV out there. If you're around Bergen County, you should check it out. Guests will immediately note the wall of round windows on the far side of the restaurant. The wine lockers, we lease them annually, and they get to store their wines, and we can open it for them every time they come dine with us. So we have a happy hour here? Yes, absolutely. Our happy hour is from Monday through Friday. It's from 3 to 7. But we also have happy hour Sunday all day, where we have drinks and food specials. A lot of people from the corporations around this town come here, they gather together, and it's even the teachers in town, they, they have a great time. So what type of foods do you serve here? It's New American Cuisine. We serve a little bit of everything. On the menu, uh, we have fresh pastas, chicken, we have fish, we have steak a little bit of everything. So I understand Chef Jeremiah is cooking us something special. Can we go take a look? Yeah, let's go check it out. Welcome here to uh, MK Valencia. We are preparing our roasted salmon. We have here our Faroe Island salmon. Here we're going to season both sides, a little salt, a little bit of pepper. Give it a little touch there, natural AP flour. To the back of the fish, gives it a really nice crisp. Just heating up our pan, a little bit of olive oil. You really want to have enough oil. It stops it from sticking and from burning. Now we like to serve our fish with a very nice crispy skin. Let it crisp up nicely. I like to then add a little bit of butter. And you can just add that right into the pan. This helps to keep that nice butteriness inside your fish by also searing it. You just scoop over that nice butter there. I feel it's pretty crisp. We just uh, nicely flip it over. How long have you been a chef? I started off out of uh, Johnson & Wales. Um, that's where I guess I kind of gained my chops. I worked in the city for about 15 years, uh, from line cook to sous chef to chef de cuisine. Worked at a few different restaurants in the area. At MK Valencia, nothing's really traditional. We do a fusion between uh, a little Middle Eastern, a little French, a little Italian cuisine, Spanish cuisine, um, and of course, Asian cuisine. I mean, people have died for food. People have gone to the ends of the world for food. Um, and I think there's really, with food, there's no limit to what you can do. So we're gonna have our pan here. We add a little bit of baby bok choy. Baby bok choy, you hear a lot of Asian cuisine. It's a very light flavor. From there, I add a little bit of garlic. Then we're having here, this is a uh, roasted pepper. It's done kind of like an agro doce style, a little bit of Italian in there. Then we finish off with a little bit of scallion, sauteing that. Our produce company carry a lot of different local produce from around New Jersey, New York State, some from Connecticut. Now we're gonna come over here, take out our fish. We have a nice crispness on both sides. Then we top it, get all those great flavors. Fried gnocchi mushrooms, a lot of times they're called straw mushrooms. These are baby pea tendrils. They taste just like peas. And then we finish it with a little bit of what we like to call Jerry Chan sauce. It's teriyaki based sauce that we make in house. That's our roasted Faroe Island salmon, roasted bok choy, agridoce red peppers, topped with gnocchi mushrooms, and finished with our Jerry Chan sauce. Outside the bar, MK Valencia is still serving unique and delicious signature drinks. I'll be making the cucumber splash right now. First off, we want to take a pinch of basil here, cucumber, some simple syrup. You want to muddle. After that, we add our Dorothy Parker gin, about an ounce and a half. And then we add an ounce and a half of uh, white cranberry juice. To that, we add our ice. And shake it. Serve it in a long stem martini glass. That's our cucumber splash martini. 
The main dining room here is gorgeous, but underneath is one of MK Valencia's finest amenities, their incredible wine cellar. Well, this is a private room. It's actually very interesting. Everybody loves it here. It's private. They get to see our collections of wine. We've actually had many parties down here. People like to have fun tastings, anniversaries, birthday parties pharmaceutical events. It's a great spot. How many bottles of wine do you know? Yeah, we have about 55 types of wine, uh, over a thousand bottles down here. It's actually temperature controlled. We wanted to cater to that certain clientele that liked wine. We wanted a private room. The guests that want to use the space, they don't have to pay an additional price. They can just make a reservation ahead of time. To make reservations, you can just go online at mkvalenciarestaurant.com or you can just call us at 201-373-0228. MK Valencia is truly a hidden gem in this northern New Jersey town. If you're ever at the far end of the turnpike, turn in here for a delicious meal or some great nightlife. Stick around, we'll be right back. Welcome back to This Is Jersey. Today we will be visiting Hunan Taste in Denville. It's a Chinese-American restaurant run by the Sheng family. The restaurant specializes in serving Hunan, Sichuan, and Mandarin cuisine. I've heard it's got a great reputation to uphold. Let's head inside to speak to Hunan's manager, David Sheng. David, I know New Jersey Monthly has honored you year after year about the quality here. Tell me about Hunan Taste. Well, Hunan Taste is a fine dining Chinese establishment. Been here for about 29 years. Throughout that time, you know, we built little by little to get to where we are now. We pour a lot of stuff from Taiwan, and you know, we're always trying to upgrade the building, but maintain every year. Now, your parents founded this? They actually started in Chinatown in the 1970s. After that, they moved to Long Island. And 29 years ago, they established Hunan Taste here, and that's where we made our home for the past 29 years. Now, what makes you unique here in Denville? Well, I believe our customers find us unique because we keep our unique decor throughout the whole entire restaurant, including the outside. Morris County, or Denville, has actually named us an official landmark. So tell us about The Real Housewives. Well, Real Housewives of New Jersey actually filmed here their first season in the back uh, room. I don't think it made it to their final cut, but they did have like a blooper edition at the end of the season, and you can see our restaurant. Wow, this is nice. A lot of time and effort goes into this, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. A lot of cleaning, a lot of maintenance, a lot of good stuff. Hunan Taste Decor is truly something special. Everywhere you look, there's something to behold. Now this wouldn't be a hot spot without eating some food. Let's enjoy. What type of food are you going to share with me tonight? Well, we'd love to have you try some of our Peking duck. I'll get a grand marinade shrimp out there, and we also do a really good whole steamed fish I could bring out. Okay. So Dave, what do we have here? This is our Grand Marnier shrimp. And what's in this? It's uh, shrimp and it's Tashina Grand Marnier sauce with pineapple, cantaloupe, strawberry kiwi, and cashew nuts. So what's it like being in the uh, restaurant business? You know what? I, I like it. It's long hours, it's tough, but it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, my parents in the restaurant business, so even when I was little, I was just been hanging around, washing dishes, just just doing homework on the side while they're working <laughs> all the time. This is phenomenal. Is this a unique dish here? Mm -hmm. Other restaurants have their variations of it, but I believe ours is has by far the, the best. The cantaloupe is phenomenal. So what does this process do? Well, this is rum, and we light it on fire, and we pretty much burning off all the alcohol. You still have some of the flavor, not the alcohol itself. This is our volcano steak. It's our filet mignon with fresh mushrooms, onions, and scallions. It's basically cooked so the alcohol content is not there, but still have a nice flavor with, to mix in with the brown sauce. And the heat is the, what encourages the flavor to, to kick in? Mostly just to take off the alcohol. Like say, we can serve this to uh, a younger yeah, audience. Great. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. Very good. The taste of the onion is unbelievable, and the, the rum is, is great as well. The dish's spices are delicious, but are too hot for me to handle. Luckily for me, David has a more mild dish for me to try. This is our picking duck. It's served in a rice flour pancake with fresh scallions and poison sauce. A little bit of scallions. Got some of the crispy skin. Wrap it up here. Put a little more, just in case you want some more plum sauce. And we're done. You know, I've never had duck before. Really? So this will be an experience for me. All right, let's see what we have here. We eat from this side? 
Yep, just just like a like a breed almost. Okay, I'll, I'll try this way. Here we go. A good duck, I believe, is to have the crispy skin with a nice tender inside. Wow, tasty. This is our whole steamed sea bass with ginger scallion sauce. Now, I've never seen a whole fish in a Chinese restaurant. Tell me about this. Well, this is actually one of our most popular dishes here. In Asia, usually they eat the whole fish, head and all. And you know, a lot of people don't know, the best part of the fish is usually the cheeks. That's where the most of the action's going, you know, so they have a lot of tender muscle over there. Uh-huh. So David, now I know where everyone in New Jersey is talking about Hunan Taste. Thank you so much for having us. It's our pleasure. Now, how can people from New Jersey find out more about your location? Uh, you go on our website, hunantaste.com. You can also, you know, go on review websites, Yelp, all that. We've been well reviewed. And you take reservations on the weekends? Yes, absolutely. Hunan Taste decor, food, and most of all, atmosphere finishes up yet another successful trip around New Jersey in search of hot spots. 